Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome to the first video in my makeup collection series. This video is going to be covering my primers, foundations, and tinted moisturizers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it because this is going to be a long one. Hey y'all, welcome to the struggle setup on my bathroom floor. So we're going to get started with the first category, which is primers. I'm aware that this is a problem. We're just going to get right into it. Uh, first things first, I have this Alginist Reveal color correcting primer. I'm actually going to put this with my tinted moisturizers because it functions a lot more like that for me. It's got those little color bursting beads in it and I feel like it would serve me better if it was with my tinted moisturizers. So this is going to go there. I'm just going to go in no particular order. This is the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. As you can see, I use it quite a bit. Big fan. The Joa Blur Activator Primer. Apparently it's a really great dupe for the Hourglass Veil Primer. Not that I would know, but I am a big fan of how this really blurs out your skin. It's a little matte for me, but as long as I moisturize well, it works great. My old reliable, the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. The fact that this was discontinued is an absolute travesty. I have a backup. We'll never let her go. On a related note, the e.l.f. Mint Melt Primer. Yes, extremely similar to the Jelly Pop. No, I won't be particularly sad when I run out of this, which will be soon, because as long as I have the Jelly Pop, I will be okay. I prefer the Jelly Pop one a little more. This one is a little thicker and I like the cooling sensation, but not as much as I like the radiance you get from the Jelly Pop. I'm so sorry for hyping up Jelly Pop like this. I know you can't get it anymore. <laughs> Although given that you can't get Jelly Pop, I think this is a really great alternative. The Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. It's really, really hydrating for a more gel-like sticky primer, but it still has that great tack that I think is what makes Jelly Pop so good. It just doesn't smell like watermelon. <laughs> Similarly, are you sensing a theme? The NYX Plump Right Back Primer is very good for the hydration and a little bit of the tack. It's nowhere near as tacky as the Hard Candy or either of the e.l.f. primers, but it still does the job on a more light duty kind of day. While we're on sticky primers, the OG, the one and only Milk Hydro Grip, big fan of this. This is what got me into the grippy primer craze, just like everybody else, I feel like. Um, but when I run out of this, I don't think I'd repurchase it just because I have so many alternatives that I really, really like. That being said, the grip on this is intense, so big fan. I have this tiny little sample of the L'Oreal infallible matte lock thing. I don't know. It's fine. I don't really use mattifying primers and I, I don't really need this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. I have two of the e.l.f. Poreless Putty primers. I have the Acne Fighting and the original. These are both really, really good. If I was going to repurchase one, I would pick the Acne Fighting because it has a little bit of the green color correcting in it and it has salicylic acid, which I really, really like um, for helping me fight off acne because I do get really bad breakouts. Nothing against this one. If you don't have problems with acne, this one is also great for the same purpose. This, the Revlon Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing, was touted by a couple of channels as a dupe for the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. Um, I've had a couple of samples of that primer and I could not disagree more. The texture of this one is completely different. It's good, it does what it says it's going to do, but it's nowhere near the texture of the Liquid Silk Canvas, and realistically, that is why I bought it. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this one as well. I have my Holy Grail, the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I love this. It, I think that it helps extend the wear of my makeup, and I think it helps my makeup stick to my face better, but more than that, it is so hydrating, so thick, so creamy. If you don't like thick, creamy, emollient stuff, you would hate this, but if that's your jam, and it is my jam, highly, highly recommend. Yes, I know it's expensive, but you know what? Last year it was on 21 Days of Beauty, so if it comes around again, consider. This NYX, bear with me, the Hydrating Jelly Primer, I bought this ages ago. It's so old and it's this weird like, oh, dropping things. It's this weird like actual jelly thing. Um, 
It's fine. It does a similar thing to what I think Plump Right Back does now. Uh, so this this can go. This can go. It's it's too bulky to take anywhere too. Kind of just a pain in the butt to use overall. So it's gonna go. An oldie but a goodie. The Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This I love for just a little bit of that extra hydration on top of whatever I have on under my makeup. And I do think it smooths out your face a little bit. The Bobbi Brown is sort of just the amped up version of this. And I don't even think you can get this specific primerizer anymore. I think Smashbox has changed it. Um, so I enjoy it, I'm gonna keep it, but there are better hydrating primers. I can't really speak to the new one, so. I have this Touch and Soul No Problem primer. I like this when I'm just trying to get a generally really, really smooth look. Very full glam for me. Uh, I enjoy it for that. So hanging on to this one. Sticking with Touch and Soul, this is the Pretty Filter Icy Sherbet Primer. I got it in a boxy charm at some point. It's really nice. I like it. It smooths out the face. It has sort of a cooling sensation, but you know what? The Wet n Wild Impossible Primer is extremely, extremely similar to this. So, I mean, even if you can get this on a deal from BoxyCharm, it's still a good, you know, what, seven, nine dollars? This one's like five, so recommend. This one has way more product though, so. I have a MAC strobe cream. I enjoy this. It's, it's not my favorite illuminating primer, but I do think it's a little, thicker and more emollient uh, than most of my other hydrating primers, and I do like that quality, so hanging on to this. As far as the glowy theme, this L'Oreal Lumi Glotion is really nice. Um, I've been using this more as like a mix-in with my foundations than a primer, but I do enjoy it for that purpose, so this is a good one. Speaking of glowy, Maybelline Formula Perfector. This is nice, however, <laughs> This, I wish I could tell you that this isn't worth it. I wish I could tell you not to spend your money on the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, but it is actually that good. I have a full size of this waiting to be opened because this is, it's so almost gone. I don't know if you can see, but I've been scraping the sides. It's, she's on her last legs. There's a full size waiting to get some good, good use out of me and it will. This is nice and I am hanging on to it. It has better color correction and coverage than the Charlotte Tilbury. So if that's what you're after, then this might be a good option for you. The glow is less impressive, I think. And there's something about the way the flawless filter just blurs over the skin. I've never found anything else like it. So while I don't think this is a dupe, I do think it serves a purpose of its own. So I do enjoy it. The Laura Geller Hydrating Spackle Primer, I actually really do enjoy this. It's a really nice sort of thin moisturizer texture, and I do think it holds on to makeup well. If I could compare this to anything, I'd say it's fairly similar in texture and consistency to the Smashbox Primerizer. So if you're ever looking for an alternative, this I also got through BoxyCharm, so it may end up being available for a cheaper price. Um, either on BoxyCharm or Amazon. I hear Laura Geller's site is always running sales. So I do recommend this if you were a fan of the original Smashbox Primerizer. Missed a touch and soul one, this glassy, um, pretty filter skin balm. Uh, it's not a balm at all. It's, it's more like a cream. Um, it's beautiful though. It really does give your skin this glassy look. Um, I wouldn't say it really smooths that much. I wouldn't say it really extends the wear of my makeup that much in my experience, but the little bit of dewy glow you get underneath it, there's no shimmer. It's just dew. It's beautiful. Really do enjoy this. I bought this Marc Jacobs Invisible Undercover Primer at Marshalls ages and ages and ages ago. It is probably so unbelievably expired. I honestly couldn't tell you how I feel about this because I've used it so few times and Marc Jacobs Beauty doesn't even exist anymore. So I can pretty comfortably get rid of this one. Let's do some of these little jar pore filling primers. This is the Winky Lux Whipped Cream Primer. I like this one. It does the job. I, I think the texture is fun. It's got little, it's like got little aeration bubbles. You see, it's kind of jiggly. 
I like that. It's fun. It does the job. It works well. Hanging on to it. This is the Tarte Timeless Primer. It's it's nice. It's different from the texture of that other one. It's much more packed down, uh, firm. You have to be careful about how much this one of this one you use because if you use too much of this, it will pill underneath other formulas. So something to be aware of, but it really is, I've heard it described as like face tune in a jar. And it definitely is. It does a really, really good job blurring out all your pores, wrinkles, whatever. It's a great primer. You just have to kind of be careful how you work with it. That being said, one you can be much less careful about how you work with it, but does just as good of a job, is this L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. This is fantastic. It has a little bit more of that aerated texture to it, similar to the whipped cream primer. It's somewhere in between. This is amazing. If I was gonna recommend one of the three, it would be this one hands down. Uh, the Tarte one, like I said, is incredibly blurring. This one can get you most of the way there, but without being so finicky to work with. So, and hello, it's maybe a third of the price. Yes. Getting down to the wire here. This is like a teeny tiny sample of like the Smashbox photo finish stick. I, I never ever use this and cause I just don't see it. It's so tiny. So I'm gonna get rid of this. This is the small one of the NYX Marshmallow Primer. I think it does a fairly good job hydrating and keeping your makeup on and blurring out your skin a little bit. The blurring effect isn't intense, but it is nice. Mainly, I, I keep this around for the smell. It, it smells absolutely divine. So, would I rebuy it? Honestly, I'm not sure. I've had good and not so good experiences with this primer, but I, I am gonna use it up because it smells so damn good. This is the Ulla Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. I got this in a BoxyCharm a little while ago. I do like it and I like that it has skincare benefits. It's not my favorite brightening primer anymore. I would like to get at least a few more uses out of this before I decide whether or not I wanna hang on to it. So this is sort of in a, in a limbo space. I need to give this one a few more tries before I make that decision. This is in a similar place for me as that last one. This is the Elemis Superfood Glow Priming Moisturizer. It is nice. It gives a nice glow, but not as much of a glow as what I look for in say the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter or, or even really the Maybelline, I think gives a better glow than this one. It is hydrating, but again, it's not as hydrating as say my Bobbi Brown Face Base. I wanna give this a few more tries, but I wouldn't be surprised if this one ends up leaving the collection soon as well. So this one also sort of in limbo. Sorry about the foundation stain on my makeup bag. Feel free to ignore. This is a little sample size of the Tula face filter. I have only tried this a couple of times because it's so small, it kind of gets lost. I need to remember to pull this out more often. But when I've tried it, it is beautiful. It has such an interesting blurring effect and it's a little bit tinted, which helps a lot on days where I'm doing pretty minimal makeup, maybe just throwing on a little bit of concealer on top of my primer and mascara and brows. So definitely wanna pull this one out more ASAP. All right, just a couple left in here. The First Aid Beauty Coconut Skin Smoothie Primer. I got this in a BoxyCharm as well. This is very nice. I do like how hydrating this is. I don't know how well my skin responds to coconut, to be honest. Uh, it says safe for sensitive skin. I have never noticed a direct correlation between this and me breaking out, mainly because I have so many primers that I would never really know which one is doing what. Um, I like what it does for my skin though, so I'm going to use it and maybe maybe try some experimenting to see how my skin responds to that coconut because it, it does obviously have coconut. You, you can smell it. So gonna experiment with this one. And last but most certainly not least, we have this Wet n Wild Glass Correct in the green shade. This is beautiful. I have a lot of redness on my face. I get a lot of acne. My skin's very sensitive, so it gets very red very easily. This helps to just kind of color correct that away without it making my entire face look green. And it also has this beautiful glow that I just love and it really comes through under makeup. I would say the level of glow you get from this is more similar to the Flawless Filter than the level of glow you get 
from the Maybelline, which is touted as a dupe. This also comes in a yellow, so highly, highly recommend if you're looking for a similar shine. Um, it won't do the blurring as much, but you do get the color correcting, which is a plus. And that is it for primers. Let's go ahead and move on to our next category. So really quickly, before we move on to foundations, I just wanna show you guys my little color corrector collection. Uh, these are some Alginist Reveal color correcting drops. I like these because they are very, very thin and very, very pigmented. Speaking of things that are very, very thin and very, very pigmented, the Milani Supercharged Brightening Under Eye Tint. This is fantastic. Highly recommend. This is one of the only color correctors I have that I can use by itself, even without concealer, and it still looks great. This is the other color corrector I can do that with. This is the Becca Brightening Under Eye Tint. Uh, mine's in the shade Light to Medium. You can still get this even though Becca is gone now. Smashbox picked this one up. It is really nice. It's very emollient though, so it can be a little bit picky if you're trying to put another concealer on top of it. But especially by itself, this one is very beautiful and very hydrating. This is my all-time favorite pink under eye corrector. This is the Pixie Brightening Peach color corrector. I have put a massive dent in this thing. I love it. It's a lot firmer in consistency than the Becca. And as you can see, it's also quite a bit pinker if you've ever seen what the Becca one looks like. As a matter of fact, just let me show you. You can see the Becca one is quite light and you can see that shine from how emollient it is. The Pixie one is much more peach and much more matte or really natural in finish. I like the Becca a lot, very hydrating, very nice. This though, cheaper, more pigmented, and for me wears better under concealer. Finishing off the under eye correctors, the Bobbi Brown is somewhere in between the Pixie and the Becca. I would say in texture and also in shade. So if you like a little bit of emollients, but something that still wears well under makeup, this is a good one, but very, very expensive. So still recommend the Pixie. As far as green, I don't have that much. I have in terms of spot color correcting greens, I have this Maybelline Master Camo and this LA Girl Pro Conceal. I'm actually gonna get rid of the Maybelline one because I like the shade, the formula, and the applicator better on the LA Girl than on the Maybelline. Th this thing is just, I don't, I, what is with Maybelline and their sponge tip thing? It, it's weird. Anyway, getting rid of this, keeping this. And last but not least, of course, I gave into the hype and bought the Dr. Jart Seek a Pair color correcting stuff. It is actually really nice. It's pretty good. This is better for correcting larger areas of redness, um, and it really doesn't look green. It helps under makeup or it helps by itself, and it's soothing as well for my skin, which is very sensitive and very easily irritated. So I like this a lot. So with that done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next category, which is foundations. I love foundations. These are my babies. Foundation is one of my major loved categories right now up there with blush. So here we go. Uh, this is the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. I have no idea what I got on it there. Um, it is beautiful. The fact that this is only $5 is unreal. From the packaging to the formulation, it's just, a plus. Too Faced Born This Way, a classic. I don't have to tell you how good it is. It's full coverage. It's natural finish. It's gorgeous. This is a luminous foundation from a brand called Designer Brands. It's an Australian brand. Um, I really, really like this. This is one of my favorite luminous foundations. As a matter of fact, I think that this is a really great alternative for the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. I love them both, so I hold on to them both. However, if you are not in the US and you have access to this, it's much cheaper and just as good. This is the Essence Pretty Natural Foundation. I like this. I've heard it described as a dupe for the Urban Decay uh, Hydromaniac. I disagree with that. I think this has a little bit more of a dry down. It's still very nice, but I think this one dries down a little bit more and isn't quite as dewy. 
and it might have a touch more coverage. I do like this though. This is the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Serum Foundation. This is really beautiful, very lightweight. Uh, the powder in this line is great and the foundation is no exception. Gave into the hype, bought the Sephora Best Skin Ever. I do not regret it. During the Sephora sales, the Sephora collection is 30% off, which makes this somewhere in the neighborhood of $13, $14. Highly recommend. It's really, really lovely. This is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie. It's supposed to be a combo foundation concealer. I only use this as foundation, but I do really love it. The finish is really, really nice. Pretty natural, I would say. A uh, satin finish and very full coverage. This is the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. I heard some hype about it and found it at Marshalls one day, so decided to give it a shot. I like it. It's not in like my top top or anything, but it's, I'm sorry, I keep blinding you. <laughs> I, I do use it and I do like it, so I do recommend if you can get it on a really good deal. I will forever ride hard for the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. This is probably my longest used foundation. Not this bottle. This is this is a newer bottle. Um, but I absolutely love this stuff. I, I don't even love matte foundations most of the time because my skin tends to be pretty dry. But if I want one, this is the tried and true, the one and only. Love it. We'll keep using it. We'll keep buying it. And for the price, you can't go wrong. Unfortunately, I'm an idiot and I tried to buy the Fit Me Dewy and Smooth, but I bought it in a shade that is way too dark for me. Uh, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and get rid of this one and get the correct shade on Amazon uh, because it's like $4 on Amazon. So if you're looking for this, Amazon. This is the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD Foundation. I never use this. I'm pretty sure it's way too yellow and way too dark. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. Absolutely stunning, really amazing coverage, really beautiful, glowy, hydrated finish. The shade's a little light for me, but I have some products I can use to darken up my foundation, so definitely a keeper. Another perfect example of matte foundations that do not absolutely destroy my dry skin, the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage. It is mattifying, but it works so well with glowy, hydrating products, but it lasts forever. Never breaks up, never looks patchy, so good. Speaking of things that last forever, never break up and never look patchy, this is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I found this little mini at a TJ Maxx for like 10 bucks. Unfortunately, it is way too pale, but I will continue to use as much of my Drunk Elephant uh, bronzing drops as it takes to make this the correct shade for me because it is that good. Another TJ Maxx find, the Josie Marin Vibrancy Foundation. This is nice, I haven't used it enough. I need to get a little bit more use out of this before I have more well-formulated thoughts, but it is lovely from the times I've tried it before. This Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. Drugstore Holy Grail, Run Don't Walk, absolutely perfect. Hydrating, glowy, but not greasy. If you have dry skin, it's just, what, $13, $14? You can get it on sale most of the time. I cannot recommend this highly enough. So, so beautiful. Of course, the classic It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. I do really like this. It's beautiful. The finish is really nice. I kind of almost wish it wasn't as full coverage as it is because for CC Cream, it's full, full, full coverage if you've never tried it before. Um, and I wish it was lighter because it's got mineral SPF 50 and I can only wear mineral foundation because my skin is so sensitive. So I wish I could use this on more of an everyday basis, but when I do use it, it's so beautiful. I suppose this is sort of what I wish the coverage of the IT CC cream was. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect um, Radiant Serum Foundation. It's got a really thin consistency. It really is serum-like. Uh, the finish is sort of satin leaning dewy, so it's not too overly radiant. And the coverage is sort of, I would put it light to a firm medium. So you can definitely get a couple of different coverage levels out of this. I know it's not being sold everywhere anymore, but if you can get your hands on it, I do recommend it. Uh, speaking of L'Oreal and their dewy foundations, the Infallible Pro Glow is a classic. This is 
It's got to be my second or third bottle. I keep coming back to this one. It is absolutely gorgeous. The glow is unreal. It's got this blurring finish. It's it's just, it's great. If you've never tried it, recommend. You can't go wrong. Eight, nine bucks. Absolutely. Of course, the classic Estee Lauder double wear. This really is as bulletproof as they say it is. I save this for very, very glam occasions where I need my foundation to be on all day. Not necessarily just glam. Uh, I've worn this to concerts before where I knew I was going to be sweaty and jumping around and it, it holds up. It holds up so well. Uh, do I think it really is anything all that special these days? Maybe not, but there's a special place in my heart for it. This is my only stick foundation. It's the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Stick. I do like it. I think it's pretty. I pretty much hang on to it because it's my only stick foundation and it looks pretty when I wear it, so nothing bad to say here. This got a lot of hype on TikTok recently. This is the Ulta Beauty Complexion Crush. They describe it as a medium coverage foundation. I would say that's true. They say it has a natural finish. I would say that's also true. It looks lovely. And uh, if you can get it on the sale price on Ulta when they're running 50% off some of their stuff, $7, you can't beat it. Wow, I completely lied to you. Okay, I said that Wet n Wild was my only stick foundation, but I have this, the Revolution Fast Base Foundation. I guess that goes to show you how often I use it. Um, I do like it. It's got really great coverage. It's got more of an emollient uh, texture, but sets down fairly well stays put. Um, I feel like I need to try this a couple more times before I decide its fate. So this is sort of going in limbo. This, another Marshall's Find, Clinique Even Better Foundation, and a really, really surprising win for me. I, I know I don't usually think of Clinique uh, when it comes to just making makeup that I'm going to love necessarily. I just kind of associate it with my mom's makeup collection. No offense, mom. Uh, but this is lovely. This is beautiful. It's got great coverage. It's got kind of a blurring effect to it. Uh, it's a solid medium coverage, I would say. And it, it's, it's really just nice. I really enjoy this one. It's got a little something about it that I can't really fully articulate, but it's beautiful. This is the Wander Beauty Nude Illusion Foundation. I should probably get rid of this just because it's really old. It, it kind of smells like Play-Doh. And I, I don't know if it's always smelled like that. And the fact that it has a doe foot applicator and also smells like Play-Doh makes me a little nervous. So it's a shame because this is a nice foundation, but I, I might need to let this one go just sort of for my own sanity. Speaking of ones I need to let go of, this uh, Kevin Aquan, the Etherealist Foundation. This was absolutely beautiful when I could use it. I mean, just, it's Kevin Aquan, so it better be, right, what you're paying for it. Um, it's, it's just old, and the last time I used it, it was just thick and dry. This, I don't know how to close, so it's just got, been getting air in it for a while now, and it's thick and it, it's expired, so this is gonna go, unfortunately. These are my Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. I didn't really use these as a mix-in. I use them more as a foundation because they are a really good shade for me. And I always get compliments when I use this as a foundation. I think it has something to do with the fact that it's just so thin in texture, but so densely pigmented that you can put on barely any of this. And it looks like you're wearing nothing, but because it's so full coverage, Every inch of your skin is perfected. It's just, I'm so sad that I don't really know where to get these anymore because it's so good. It's so good. So I'm running low, but I will use every last drop. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus in the Dewy. I used to have the matte, but since my skin's gotten so dry, I ended up getting rid of that one. I do like this one though. Really nice medium full coverage. Uh, dewy finish that I feel like is approachable and not ultra radiant. And it's, what, five bucks? I like this one. This I don't think you can get your hands on anymore. This is the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. It's pretty. It's another one of those ones that's a doe foot applicator, which is, you know, semi-questionable for foundation. But 
not a deal breaker for me. I like it. You know, I, do I think you should be ultra, ultra sad if you missed out? Not necessarily. There's stuff out there still that's just as good, but I'm going to hang on to it because I do like using it. All right, we're getting down to the last few that I love and adore. This Catrice a True Skin Hydrating Foundation is probably my current favorite drugstore foundation. It is so gorgeous. It lasts amazingly, but it has this natural looking radiance. It really looks like your own skin is just so well hydrated and gorgeous. And I mean, the staying power, like I said, you just, you can't beat it for a hydrating foundation. Seriously, I don't know how they did it. Cannot recommend enough. This is the Bare Minerals Original Powder Foundation. It is really nice. I, I love that it's got SPF. I love that it, I feel like it's less likely to break me out than liquid foundations. I don't know. There's something about like powder just sitting on top of the skin versus the liquid kind of feels like it sinks in and breaks me out more often. So if I'm really worried about breaking out throughout the course of the day, I just tend to reach for this one. So love her. And last, but oh, absolutely not least, possibly my favorite foundation, the Dior Backstage Face and Body. This is, there's something about it. I, I don't know how to describe what it does. It's thin and almost watery in consistency. Uh, and the coverage isn't super full, but it just makes your skin look like it's just naturally perfect. It makes it look like your skin I, I hate to use the phrase your skin, but better because it's so overdone, but it's true. It's, ugh. I mean, it's luxury obviously, so it better be great, but it is, it really is great. Uh, my one complaint about this is that it's pretty high in alcohol, which is why it sets down so well and you can wear it for so long. But because of that, because I'm so dry and sensitive, I can't wear this too, too often, but I tend to save it for special occasions anyway. Okay, that's it for foundations. We'll go ahead and move on to my tinted moisturizers next, which I have fewer of. <laughs> okay, our last category for this video is tinted moisturizers. We will go ahead and jump right in. This Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator is beautiful. The coverage, gorgeous. The finish, gorgeous. Hydrating, fantastic. What, I think it's, I don't know. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of five, seven dollars. Get one. Seriously. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know how they did this. L'Oreal True Match Nude. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I, I think it's it probably, it, you could argue that this is actually a foundation, but I keep it with the tinted moisturizers anyway. It, it's so gorgeous. It's got pretty decent coverage for a, a tinted serum as they're calling it. And it's kind of got a high alcohol content. So if you are dry or sensitive like I am, you gotta be careful how often you wear it. But oh man, is the payoff worth it? It's just everything about it. The lasting power, the finish, so beautiful. Don't mind how dirty my tube is, but the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Tinted Moisturizer is really, really beautiful. Um, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a true tinted moisturizer, sheer to light coverage, really hydrating, has a little bit of a dewy finish. You can't go wrong. This was such a pleasant surprise. This came in a boxy charm. This is the Pure Lease Ageless Glow Serum BB Cream. It's gorgeous. It, I would actually class this as at least medium coverage. Um, but wow, it's got this gorgeous glow to it. It's moisturizing, hydrating, it smooths everything out, and it's got SPF 40 mineral sunscreen. So I can wear this on a regular basis. Love this one, seriously. I don't, if, if I run out, I'm, I'm like scared to run out because it's so pretty. The fact that this was discontinued is honestly a tragedy. This is the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. I would class this as a solidly light coverage uh, tinted moisturizer. It is so, so beautiful. It's blurring. It's natural finish, I would call it. Absolutely love it. I'm so sad they don't sell this anymore. I get compliments when I wear this. I, I'm going to quit hyping it up because you probably can't get it, but wow, is this good. 
This is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydromaniac. I really enjoy this. Do I think it would be worth it if I paid, you know, however much it was full price? No, but I got it on Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, so I do think it's worth it. However, if you're tossing up between paying full price for this and buying the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator, I'm telling you, they're almost exactly the same thing. Get the Wet n Wild, you won't regret it. But if you see this on a deal, I'm not going to say you shouldn't. This is the LA Girl Tinted Foundation. I've only used this a couple of times, but I did really like it. They describe it as buildable, and I would say it is. I would say you can get light coverage up to like a solid medium from this, and it's very pretty. The finish is nice. It's got a natural finish, like it says, uh, sort of a satin matte type finish, and I think it's really nice, so I'm going to keep using it. Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. Bought it on BoxyCharm sale, mostly just because I thought the packaging was cool. And, and the packaging is cool. It has a little clicky thing. It comes out in like little balls. I don't know. It's neat. Um, it also has a beautiful, I mean, this is ultra dewy. Like the finish on this is ultra dewy. If you're not into that, you're not into this. But I am, so I love it. This one I actually think is advertised as a foundation, but I tend to keep it with tinted moisturizers because it serves more of that purpose for me. This is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue. It's lovely. It's got a radiant finish, SPF 45, which I love. Not much more to say. It's just a really great foundation slash tinted moisturizer. Please don't spend this much money on it, though. Only if you can get it on sale, okay? You can, you can do just as good at the drugstore. I'm probably going to go ahead and get rid of this. I almost never use it. It's it's the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream. It It's literally for oily skin. I'm not even sure how I ended up with this, to be quite honest with you, because I have very dry skin. It's not like ultra matte, but it's more matte than I would ever go for on a daily basis. So this one's probably going to go. On the other hand, with CoverGirl, the Clean Fresh Skin Milk, sorry about the Kroger sticker, that's nice. Um, <laughs> the Clean Fresh Skin Milk is really nice. I need to use this more because I can tell that it's starting to sort of separate. The last time I used it, it kind of had like a weird sort of separation thing going on. I was able to shake it back up and it came back together just fine, but need to use this more because it's kind of, uh, it's about to go off. Uh, a lot of clean makeup or stuff that's advertised as clean anyway, the whole clean thing, whatever. I'm going on a tangent. Point is, need to use this more. Uh, this was in my primer section, said it was going to go with the tinted moisturizers. Here it is. This is the Becca Light Shifter Doing Tint. Obviously, Becca's out of business, so you can't get this anymore. I don't really know where to put this even, because it has coverage, like the coverage of a tinted moisturizer, but it is so, so glowy that it feels like it's something I should be wearing under makeup. I feel like I need to experiment with this more, so I will report on this when I have more formed thoughts on how this works best. And finally, the MAC Studio Radiance Face and Body. I found this at TJ Maxx not too long ago, and I was so excited because I've heard all of the hype, and it is really great. It's very, very liquidy, very serum texture, um, but it is glowy. I would say it is sheer. It's sheer to light at most. So, you know, that has to be what you're looking for, but it is gorgeous. Really beautiful glow, really beautiful finish, just enough of a blurring property. Really like this one. Forgot to mention this one because it is with my everyday makeup section, but this is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. Calling it a BB Cream is probably a little bit of a stretch because it's got quite a bit of coverage, but wow, is it gorgeous. Again, all of the things I said that I love the dewy finish, the blurring property, the SPF, love this stuff. I have a backup ready to go <laughs> because I use it a lot. <laughs> So that is it for my primer, foundation, and tinted moisturizer collection. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to take a look at what I have, hear what I think, and we got a little bit of decluttering done in there as well. So until the next one, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll like and subscribe down below if you want to see more from me, and I'll see you in the next one.